What is up everybody? It is Og here, back with another video. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about some really useful weak auras for mage AOE farming. Now this was sparked by a recent one that I just received from a viewer of the stream called YoPlay, and it was his you know, rendition of working on it with Murloc Mask. And this week or is gonna be very, very beneficial to a lot of people. So I wanted to make this video to include that. And then to also show you guys some of the other important ones and how to set them up. One question I get all the time is how do I set up the NAN weak aura? And that's the one that shows the barrier on the right side of my screen. You can see it right now. But how do I set that up with all the colors? So I wanted to include in the video basically how to do that, just so that if anyone ever needs it in the future, they can reference this video to see that. Before we get started though, I want to update you on some really exciting news. The tentative date of our next world record attempt, one to 60 speed leveling assisted world record is December 11th. So the plan is December 11th, we're gonna try to go one to 60 and reclaim the record that Zegers took. So congrats to Zegers, he absolutely killed the world record attempt that he did. I think he got 36 hours and 18 minutes. So that's our goal. But I wanna to try to push it even further and try to go one to 60 in under 24 hours. So if you guys haven't checked out the stream yet, definitely check out the stream, give it a follow and turn on the notifications so you can know when we're gonna go live and December 11th is the planned date for that. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna run through all the week ores, I'm gonna talk about them a little bit, and then I'm also going to have how to set them up if there's some special setup things. From there, obviously, in order to import a weak aura, you have to go down and import a specific string. So I'm gonna have all the strings and links included in the description down below. So any of these weak auras that you wanna use and you wanna implement in your own kind of farming, definitely just look down below to find those. There'll also be timestamps down below so you guys can navigate to exactly where you want to in the video. Let's jump into it. So the first thing I wanna talk about is how to import a weak aura. And so right here, we're in game. And if you don't have the weak aura add-on, I definitely recommend getting it. I think you can still get it from Twitch, but eventually we're gonna to have to go off the Twitch app. And so you can then get it from curseforge.com. But if you get the add-on and you type slash WA, that is going to open up this screen right here. From this screen, you can see all the different weak auras that we have. So obviously we have a bunch that we don't use and those are the not loaded section, but under the loaded, we do have some weak auras that we use. The nice thing is that if we were to click on one of these, you can actually see this kind of dragged out feature to show you exactly where it's gonna be on the screen. So you can move it around wherever you want and you can kind of get a visual representation of what it's gonna look like. For example, here's the NAN shield. It's gonna be right here. Here's another one that we're gonna be talking about. It's down here. So you can move them around really easily on your screen. You also have all these options over on the side, and this is how you're going to go ahead and update them to whatever kind of specifications that you wanna have on your personal settings. In order to import those, you have to go into this import button. So you go up to the top, click import, then there's going to be a you know, paste text that you get, copy paste that in, import, and you are good to go. So where do we get those weak or imports? Well, if you go to wago.io, that is basically the repository of all the different weak aura imports you can get. And so then you can go to any of these classic weak auras that you want. Let's just say we wanna to go to Mage, we're gonna to go to Frost. Okay, so we navigated to the NAN shield. And so now we have, you know, this, it gives a brief description of what's going on, comments, which you can read if you'd like to, collections, versions, et cetera, if you wanna download a different version. Typically, you don't need to do that. What I do is I go up to the top, you see this button right here, copy classic weak or import string. You'll get the import string copied kind of update. And then all you have to do is you go up to your client, control V to import the code, and then you can just hit done. And you can see here, this is a preview of what's gonna be imported. So this is how you import the weak auras, and then you can go through and you can manipulate them and move them around and all those kind of things that you need to. So one really nice weak aura when you're doing any kind of farm where you're gonna be using the Blade of Eternal Darkness, it's a Blade of Eternal Darkness timer. So you can see here that we have a good amount of mobs, we're gonna stack them up, and then we wanna be able to kind of keep track of how much mana we're gonna get back as we go along. And so every time that mana procs, you get the counter over here that basically tells you you regen this much mana. Now it's purely for aesthetic effects because there's not like crazy amount of things that you can do with this information, but you can see here that it's pretty cool to see just how much mana we get back in a typical fight. We only have about, what, six, seven mobs we're killing right here, but imagine a fight in which we're killing about 50 mobs. You could see just how much mana you could potentially get back, and that is really gonna be kinda, kinda eye-opening to show you just how good the Blade of Eternal Darkness can be in various situations. But you can see here, just from this fight alone, we were able to get back 1,100 mana. Now I'm gonna try to make sure that I don't die to these mobs. 
because they're probably going to spawn other mobs and I'm boom. Yikes. Got it. All right, 1,200 mana just from one pack of mobs. So you can see kind of why the Blade of Eternal Darkness can be great. And this could be kind of cool just to have during some of your runs where you're killing a lot of mobs with Blade of Eternal Darkness. So this next Hoi Cora, I didn't really think about how useful this might be. However, this is actually gonna be very useful. So when you get a clear casting proc, typically it's just this small little pop-up on your character's model that you can see, right? And so, it's very hard to see. It's not something that's just going to pop out. And so one weak aura that's very useful is a clear casting weak aura. So you can see these kind of halo like bar effects right here, basically. And every single time that you get a clear cast, these are going to pop up. Now, this is very useful in certain situations like ZG when you're trying to conserve mana jumping back and forth, or just if you need to know to use a max rank versus a rank one. This is very useful to be able to see it. So you don't have to focus on obviously your buff bar or small little changes to your character model to see if you get a clear casting. So I would highly recommend having this week aura as well. So this next week aura is a week aura that actually prompted the video. So shout out to YoPlay and Murloc Mask from Bigglesworth who basically set this up and made this. A lot of people have issues with timing when to come out of ice block, right? A lot of people use cancel or ice block, which is great, but a lot of people still have issues coming out of ice block. And so they made this ice blocking 0.2 quite a name, but as you can see on the bottom of the screen here, we have this green bar. Basically, this is a weapon swing timer of the mobs that hit you. So when you have multiple mobs hitting you, it's going to calculate the average swing timer of those mobs to tell you when to go out of blizzard. Basically, the idea is that you want to hop out when the bar is green, right? Because when the bar is green, mobs aren't going to be hitting you. When the bar is red, there's going to be a lot of mobs that are about to hit you with their weapon swing timer. So if I go here and I aggro these first group of mobs in strat, and then I block, we can see just how that swing timer works. So we're gonna come over here, we're gonna block, and you can see we now have, it counts the mobs too, but you can see, okay, so in the green, red, green, come out of block, get out of there, and I'm perfectly fine. You can see that I have a ton of shields left. Again, if I run into them, we can see that we're getting hit, and you can see the exact timings of when we're getting hit. So obviously this could be really useful in a lot of different scenarios. One scenario is gonna be SM when you're coming out of blocks, Maybe ZF if you're doing the clear casting shroud coming out of blocks. DM East killing the satyrs when you're coming out of blocks. Anytime that you're coming out of a block, this is going to be incredibly useful to be able to time the best time to come out of the ice block so you take the minimum amount of damage possible. This next week aura is the week aura that I get asked about all the time. And this is going to be the most important week aura for all mages. So shout out to the creators. Thank you so much for making this. Basically, it is an absorb weak aura. Now, this doesn't just work for mages. This works for any kind of absorbs. So if you're pre-shield or anything like that, it'll also pop up. But the idea is basically that we can see a visual countdown of how much time we have left on a shield before it's going to break. So, for example, when I pop my ice barrier here, we can see that we have 840 of a shield from ice barrier. Now, if we add on a mana shield, now we're up to 1409. And then let's say we add fire shield, or fire ward rather, it comes up as even more. So I guess it didn't include the fire ward. Maybe for whatever reason, I'm not sure. But you can see that we have this orange bar. And so we can at least visually see when the fire ward is going to drop off. So this is really useful because when we're in situations where we want to make sure that we have ice barrier that we're using more than mana shield, or we want to make sure that we have some shields so we don't get dazed, or we want to make sure that we're not going to be taking some XX damage, this is one of the best add-ons that we can possibly have. Let me see something real quick. And yeah, so when you just cast the Fire Ward, you can see the amount of damage that it's gonna shield you for. But I guess the idea is, since we started off with a physical damage barrier or an all-encompassing damage barrier, it didn't include it. But here you can also see that it's orange for me. And this is where a lot of people have a lot of questions. Because when you just typically get this out of the box, it's called NAN Shield, it does not come orange, right? And so, what we have to do is once we import it, we have to then go and update some of the individual things for it. And so if you go over to the conditions tab, on the conditions tab, you have all these different conditions and the conditions are basically the types of damage. So you have physical, arcane, fire, frost, holy, nature, and basically every single different type of shield that you do has a different color. When you first get this, they all have the same color. So you have to go through and you have to update these 
to basically change them to whatever color you want it to be. So for example, the frost is currently on this cyan blue, but if we change it over to, let's just say purple for both of these, one's text and one's the actual color. And then we update with a frost ward. We can now see that the frost ward is now purple instead of being blue. So as long as you go through and you update those colors, you can then see all the different colors. That's very useful to know which barrier is has which amount left. So you can refresh ice barrier when you need to versus mana shield, or if you have some kind of frost ward or fire ward up to see how much damage you have left to block from that. But this is one of the most useful weak wars out there so you can know when to not get dazed, when to not take damage, etc. All right, everyone, that wraps up today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, please subscribe and leave a like and a comment below to let me know so. And if you guys have any other ideas for any other videos, please let me know in the comments below. Also check out the description for the Twitch where I do all this live and also for my Twitter and Discord where you guys can be notified of any future updates and when I'm gonna go live on stream. So I'll see you guys in the next video.